today I'm gonna explain to y'all my philosophy behind how I do my leg days, how I turn my legs. So y'all come work out with me, let's go. So first and foremost, we're gonna make sure we get a good warm up in. Especially me, I got real tight hips. So loosening up my hips are critical for me on leg day. Cause if not, I'll be hurting the next day. So I spent a good 10 to 15 minutes making sure I'm loosening up my hips and my legs on leg day. Y'all may be wondering why I'm working out in sweatpants and a hoodie. That's because it's freezing outside. It's 27 degrees right now in South Alabama. So if you know anything about South Alabama, that's cold. We ain't used to that kind of weather. First up, y'all already know, we're doing the squat. The squat is the king of all leg exercises. So all you deadlift people out there, don't add me. So the reason why I do the squats first in my workout is because I'm fresh. It's the first workout. My legs are fresh. My legs aren't tired, they're not sore. And the reason why you wanna be fresh for your squats is because squats are a compound lift, meaning they work mu multiple muscle groups at a time. And squats are, they're one of the most demanding exercises you can do. So they, they require the most energy, the most technique, the most force and effort. So you wanna be able to put 100% into the squat, because if you don't, you're not gonna get the benefits from it that you could see from doing the squat the right way. So for that reason, we do them first to get the best results possible. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing very lightweight and I'm just warming up. You wanna make sure you're doing at least, at least one, if not two, warm up sets on any exercise, not just leg day. But for these, I'm especially getting a good warm up because I don't wanna injure myself. The squats, very easy to injure yourself just because it's such a technical lift. And you really need to practice your technique on the squat before you start doing a lot of heavy weight because you can get injured very easy. So make sure you're getting one of sets in. All right, so we got the second one of set. Doing 185. First, I gotta shed this layer. It's getting hot. All right, that's better. All right, that's better. So the way I line up on my squats, don't really matter where you put your hands out on the bar. I used to get a little wider grip, but now I actually like to get a little more narrow grip because when I do, I think it kind of like squeezes my back a little bit. So when you're out wider, your back's a lot, a lot more relaxed. So if you squeeze your grip in a little bit, it kind of pinches you up and makes you a little bit tighter, more firm. So that's what I kind of do now. I don't get super wide, just outside of shoulder width. So when I do put the bar on my back, I'm a lot more tighter. And I feel like this helps me be a little more stable because I can really like lock down on the bar on my back. So, so a little narrow grip on the bar. When it comes to feet, I want my feet just outside of shoulder width. Don't want them too narrow. Don't want them in, inside. And you don't want them too wide. So what I'll do is just outside of shoulder width, and then I'll turn my toes out just a little bit. I don't want my toes straight forward, and I don't want my toes pointing way out. Just a little bit is plenty. And then when we squat, I always preach full range of motion. So when I squat, I'm all the way down here. Like, I don't want my butt to touch my ankles. I'm all the way down. I don't believe in doing 90 degree reps. I think you should go past 90 degrees, because why would you want to half rep anything? So most people say 90 degrees, which is like right here. They'll stop here, and come up, which don't get me wrong. That's a good, that's still a good squat. That's a really good squat. But I'm not going super heavy and I'm not doing power lifting. So I want to practice a full range of motion. So I'm gonna go all the way down. I'm here, see I'm past 90 degrees. And I think this just works for me. I'd rather be more mobile than lift 405 pounds, you know? So I preach four range of motion, but at the same time, 
I don't do a lot of weight. I don't go up over like 245 on squat. And that's just because the wrist versus reward for me, it's just not there. But I still like to do the squat because you can make it really hard with light weight. So the first warm up, I did 12 reps. And this set, I'm gonna get 10 reps. So when it comes to the squat, there's several different ways you can set up your sets and reps. But the way I do it is, I'll get one to two warm up sets in, lightweight. Make sure you're getting your legs loose, get them ready, to, get them loose, get them warm, get them ready to go. And then there's a couple different options you can do. You can do three sets of 10 to 12. You can do heavy weight, low reps, or you can do somewhere in between, which is what I do. I'm not training for a powerlifting show, so I'm not doing super heavy weight, light reps, but I like to train a little harder than doing three sets of 10. So what I do is I'll start with a set of 10 to 12, then I'll raise the weight a little bit, do a set of eight to 10, raise, then I'll raise the weight again, do a set of four to eight, depending on where I'm at in my training cycle. And then typically three working sets of squats should be good, but if you wanna go a step further, you can add another set, do about 90% of your one rep max, and do one to two reps. So this is gonna make sure you're still training your legs pretty heavy, but you're not destroying yourself doing four sets of five. It really just depends on your goals, what you're trying to do. If you're trying to get stronger, you may wanna go more of the powerlifting route, do heavy weight, low reps. If you're trying to build some size, I would say more in that moderate rep range. And then if you're just here working out, get some good cardio, you can do three sets of 10, that's fine. All right, so we had to shed another layer. It's getting too hot for all that. But we're gonna hop into the first working set right here, 225. We're gonna get 10 reps. But first, I'm gonna put y'all on a little pro tip. Well, when you're working your legs, you wanna get you a good pair of shoes. Get you a good pair of workout shoes. So these, these are the Nike Metcons. You can tell they have a flat sole. So get you a good pair of shoes because these are good for working on your mobility. As we get older, as we age, we start to lose that mobility in our legs, in our ankles. So it's good to have you a good flat pair of shoes because you want to be able to set a good firm base. You don't want to be on tennis shoes where you're wobbling, where it has thick soles. Get you a flat sole shoe and these will work wonders when it comes to your leg day. If you're just starting out, don't worry about getting a specific shoes. You can always live barefooted if you need to, but having a good pair of shoes helps a lot when it comes to your leg days. As you start getting to a little bit heavier weight, when you go down to your bottom of your rep and then you explode up out of it, your knees are gonna tend to want to cave in. They're gonna do this number right here. So you wanna resist that as much as you can and you almost wanna think, push your knees out. So like as you come up, your knees are gonna start to cave in. So you gotta think, push them out so they don't do that. So once you start doing a little heavier weight, you'll see what I'm talking about. But we come down, my knees will start to cave in like that. So I'm gonna push them out. When I come up, so down, push them out. See, on that one, I never let them come in. See, on that one, they try to cave in a little bit on me, but I had to resist it, fight it as much as I can. Hopefully, I explained that well to you. Yeah, you just want to try to keep your legs from caving in because they're going to try to when you start lifting some heavy weight. So, think. When you explode up at the bottom, think point your knees out, spread them out, and this will allow you just to have that firm base that you need when you're moving a lot of weight. All right, here we go. Last set, 265. Try to get it twice. So let's get it. Another thing you'll notice is there's two ways you can put the bar on your back. 
I actually do what you call a high bar. So I put it up on the upper part of my traps. And then you also can do a low bar, which I don't care for the low bar, but people will put it, put the bar down lower on their back like this. So the low bar will be more in this region and the high bar is more up here. So I actually prefer to do this one rather than putting it here. It's just a personal preference for me. Some people say you're actually stronger if you do the low bar, but I didn't learn squats that way. So I just don't prefer, I like to do a high bar. And that's what I stick to. All right, so next, next we're gonna hop into the seated leg curl. Now, this is a good machine to work the hamstrings. And pretty much every fitness gym is gonna have a machine just like this, because it's very common. And it works good. In my opinion though, I like the lying leg curl a little better. So it's basically the same machine, except sitting down, you lay down on your belly and you curl the weight up behind you. I prefer to do those, but the gym that I'm at now, you don't have one of those. So you gotta work with what you got. First I'll make sure the machine is adjusted to fit you. So the reason I do hamstrings after I do squats is because squats, yeah, they're a, yeah, they're a compound lift and they work most of most groups, but they're mainly focused on your quads. So that's where they put the most emphasis on your quads. So with that being said, I don't wanna work quads again right after I do my quads. I wanna work hamstrings. So I wanna go back and forth between quads, hamstrings, and calves. And the reason is I don't, it's so that, and the reason is while I'm doing my hamstrings, my quads are resting. So when I go do my next quad exercise, they're well rested and I can give max effort when it comes to doing my lift. Oh yeah, I felt that one. So when it comes to using this machine, you wanna make sure the machine's adjusted to your body. When you wanna adjust this to where it sits right on your Achilles, you don't want it too far up your calf, and obviously you don't want it down your foot. So I like to get it right there about on my Achilles, and that's a good length. So for this pad, make sure it's pushed all the way down your legs as firm as possible because you don't want any wiggle room. You want it all the way down so that you can't move. You wanna be locked in the seat. You don't want your you don't want it to be too loose to where you can still move your legs. That's not good. You want to be all, all the way down as firm as you can. And then when it comes to the seat, you want to make sure your back is all the way up against the pad. Because on this machine, when you start to do the weight, it's going to want to pull your butt out. And then it creates a gap right here. So you want to think, lock yourself all the way into the seat. And the way I do this is I actually use these handles to push against. So I'll, you'll see me, I'll push against the seat and it keeps me locked down in the position of the seat. So let's do a set. And notice I'm letting the weight slowly come back up. I'm controlling the weight up and then exploding down, squeezing all the way. Don't do a half, don't do a half a rip. Do it all the way down, control it back up. All the way down, control it back up. See, I'm really pushing against these handles to make sure I'm staying back because it's wanting, it's wanting to pull my butt away from the seat. So, stay locked in. When it comes to the way I would do my sets and reps for this machine is you can do it the same way you do squats is go up on your weight and go down on your reps. But just on these machines, I like to keep it simple and just do like three sets of 10. So on the first set, if I get, if my, if my goal is 10, but I get 12, what I'll do is I'll raise the weight up a little bit. So like on the last set, I did 12. I'm gonna raise the weight up and then do three sets of 10. Again, if I get to 10 on that one and I don't have much left in the tank, then I'll stay at that weight. But if I can get to 12 or 11, then I'll go up on weight again. So I tend to start lower and work my way up on weight, but it just depends. If you, if you wanna keep things simple, just do three sets of 10. Make sure you're coming close to failure at the end. You don't have to go all the way to failure. One or two reps in reserve would be good for make sure it's hard enough and you're gonna see results from it. Because if it's too easy and not enough tension on the hamstrings, it ain't gonna do you no good. So you gotta be pushing yourself, make sure it's tough, don't make it easy. See like on that set, I had a few left in the tank after I got the 12 reps. So I went ahead and knocked out three extra reps, got 15 just to make it a little harder, because that's gonna be my last set. So I wanna really make sure I'm putting enough stress on the muscle to actually see results from it, to actually build muscle from it. All right, so next we're gonna do the calf raise, standing calf raise to be exact. 
and I actually like to do these on the Smith machine because the Smith machine is on a track so it only allows you to go up and down it don't allow no forward or backward momentum so it's a lot better to do the cast because you ain't got to worry about keeping your balance you can just just focus on the calf you can go up and down so that's why we're going to use the Smith machine instead of just doing it in like a squat rack where the bar moves freely I like this better you can do it in a squat rack and that's okay but I feel like I can do more weight and put more emphasis on the calves when I do it on a Smith machine but first before you get started what you're gonna do is you're gonna get rid of this jump this jump right here this is for females if you're a man get rid of this jump if you're a woman you can use this but otherwise get rid of that jump So you obviously want to leave, you want some kind of platform to put your toes on, because if not, because when you do it on an incline like this, you can get a lot more stretch in your calf. See how I can go all the way down into the negative, and then all the way up. All the way down to my heels touch the floor, all the way back up. And really control the weight to really put as much emphasis on the calf as possible. You don't want to just rip them out like this. I mean, we'll save that for the end, but for now, until you tire the calves out, you want to make sure you're slow and control. Yeah, I know I don't have the biggest calves, so y'all don't make fun of me. But we getting there. We making progress one day at a time. So now I'm at the end, and I'll rip out a couple extra reps just to pump some blood in the calf muscle. But you don't want to do that the whole time. Another good trick to do if you really want to put some size and strength in your calf muscles is train your calves first. Like do them first before you do any other lifts. Most people save their calves for the end of their workout because it's a smaller muscle group. What they do is they tire their calves out. By the time they train them at the end, they're exhausted. So you won't get as much results out of them because they're tired. So if you really want to put some size on them, then train them first before you do any other lift. And this is a good little hack for when you train your calf muscles. I know y'all see them calf muscles down there. They coming through on the front side. I've actually made a lot of results in my calves lately. My calves used to be non-existent. And I'm a firm believer of calves are 100% genetic and I was not blessed with the calf muscle genetics. I've always had big calves, but I've never had toned or cut up calves. So you could never really see them. They were always covered, but you can start to see them a little bit now. We getting there slowly but surely. Ooh. Yeah, my calves are on fire now. All right, last set. So when it comes to how I do my sets and my reps, since the calf muscles are a smaller muscle group, I tend to like to do more reps. So what I'll do is three sets of 15, and then at the end, I'll rep out a few little half reps, just to add in a little extra, just to pump in a little blood into the calf, and it just gives it that overall finishing touch. So three sets of 15 is what I typically stick to. So after my calves start to tire out, like right now, and I can't get a full rep anymore, I'll just pump them out like this, some half reps. This really tires the calves out at the end. Oof. Yep, and that'll do it. All right, so next up we're gonna do the barbell lunge. Now the lunges are one heck of a workout. They're super hard. And most people avoid the lunges at all costs because they suck, but they work, they're good. And again, just like the squat, the lunge is a compound movement. So not only you can work in your quads, you can work in your hamstrings, you can work in your glutes, all of the above. But for this exercise specifically, we're gonna focus mainly on the quads. And another good way to do the lunge is doing a Bulgarian split squat, which is where you do dumb, you hold the dumbbells and you just lunge on one leg at a time. Those are killer. So save those for a day that you're mad at the world. That's when you do Bulgarian split squats. But for today, we're gonna do the barbell lunge because I like to switch it up, I like to go back and forth. So, barbell lunge, let's get it. Make sure you're breathing. All right, again, so when it comes to my reps and sets, I like to do three sets of 10. So, and when I say 10, I mean 10 each leg. So really, it's three sets of 20. How to do the lunge, when you lunge down, you don't wanna go down so fast where you just smash your knee on the ground. Like you don't wanna go all the way down here where I'm on the knee. 
you want to go just before just before your leg your knee hits the ground so like this right here back and you want to push all the way back to where you started from so lunge forward and i want to think explode up back to where i started from and if you have to if it helps you you can actually point your toe inwards a little bit to give you a little bit more stability so like your toe don't have to be perfectly straight sometimes it helps to kind of turn your toe in just a little bit to give you a little bit more stability so i actually so i actually turned mine in just a tad help me out don't do it too much though it may hurt yourself all right last set let's get it another thing you can do for doing the lunges is you can do them just like this but with dumbbells so hold two dumbbells in your hand down by your waist and that's another way to do standing standing lunges you can also do walking lunges so instead of returning where you started you can literally just walk forward and backward like walk down the gym turn around and come back that's another way to do the lunge but i, I actually do all of them so i switch it up I go back and forth so today we're just going to keep it basic and do the barbell lunge yeah like i said these are brutal these suck but they work Ow. all right so this next exercise we're gonna do a weighted step up and i like to do these with the plate and hold it above my head because not only it's gonna be working the legs and the glutes specifically but it's also gonna be working the core at the same time so i actually don't do abs on leg day because a lot of the leg exercises they're gonna work your, your core while you do them so i don't specifically target the abs but when i do exercises like this and i do the squats it's gonna be hitting the abs too so i save my ab days for days where i do upper body so as you can tell this is more of an agility lift this is not really gonna put on a bunch of strength or size but this is good for agility and everyday movement mobility which is why I like to do these and it's gonna work your core so this is good just for everyday life and everyday health you're probably not gonna put on a bunch of size or strength unless you just absolutely load up the weight when you do this also brings in a balance factor so when I explode up on one leg I'm also bringing balance into the play which is also good so when I do these I'm actually using an 18 inch box to step up on you don't have to start with 18 inches I would say I would suggest start with 12 inches and then work your way up as you go but I do these all the time so I'm used to it and I want to make it a little harder so I use 18 inches instead of 12. If you want to make this exercise a little harder, instead of using one plate, you can use two plates, but I find that it's kind of hard to hold two plates above your head like that. So what you could do instead is use a barbell. Just hold a barbell straight above your head and you can load up as much weight on there as you want. And that'll make this harder. But honestly for this, what I'm going for, I'm not trying to do a bunch of heavy weight. I'm really just trying to get the agility and mobility benefits out of doing this. So when we're doing them, we step up, we want to think explode through with the opposite leg. So when I step up, I want to explode through and step back down with the same leg you exploded with. So step up, explode through, step back down. Explode. And try to control it. Don't be like so off balance that you're just falling back down. Try to hold it at the top for a split second. That way the weight is nice and controlled. This one's a good one for you females if you want to grow the booty, but I think it's good for men too. I lost track. I don't know how many that was, but that's good. Woo. All right, last set right here. I'm going to turn around the opposite way so that y'all can see what it looks like from behind. But right, here we go. Let's get 10 reps each leg. Make sure you're breathing while you do this because you don't want to pass out. That wouldn't be good. 
and there you have it folks that is step up all right last exercise here we're gonna end it off we're hitting the calf muscles again but this time we're gonna do it on the seated machine so this actually works the calf in a little different angle to doing the standing on the smith machine like we did earlier so on these instead of having my feet straight forward i actually like to turn my feet out to where my heels come in so you can see my heels come in turning my toes out and i just like the way that it hits the inside of my calf a little better than doing it like a standing calf raise so let's do these real quick start out with a lighter weight and then i'll work my way up as i go when i do these i like to think squeeze at the top and lower control the weight back down so squeeze here for a second control the weight back down again calves are smaller muscle group so i'm gonna get i'm gonna get more reps in so 15 to 20 then i'm gonna raise the weight up for the next set And then just like we did on the standing, I'm gonna rep out a few little half reps at the end. Just get a good little pump on the cast. All right, for this set, I got y'all set up in the back so y'all can see what it looks like from the back. Again, turning my heels in, that's gonna let me hit the inside of that calf a little bit better. We went up on the weight a little bit, we're doing three plates this time. So again, we're gonna try to get 15 reps here. Remember, control the weight down, explode up, squeeze at the top and repeat that. And then, I'm gonna rip out a few at the end. So yeah, my calf muscles, they're really gonna hate me after this leg workout today because I'm doing a little more calves than I typically do. Today I did two different exercises on calves. Normally I only do one, but I was just feeling the calves today for some reason, so that's why we're doing Actually, the real reason why is this machine has been broken in our gym for a very long time, and today is the first day it's been back, so I had to get on here and use it. So shout out to the Y for fixing this machine because it's been months since it's been broken, so I haven't been able to use it. All right, let's knock out this last set. for today's leg exercise but just to recap on what all we did and why we did it first and foremost I started off with a five minute run on the elliptical machine just to get some blood flowing get my heart rate up get me warmed up a little bit I mentioned it's freezing cold outside so I had to get warm had to loosen the body up then we did a more specific leg warm-up where I did all the leg mobility lifts stretches just to loosen up my legs get my hip loosen up my hip flexors to get ready for the lift we started off with the squat, and we did the squat because it's the most demanding on the body. It's a compound lift, so it's typically gonna be the hardest to do. So I'll start with those, because I'm fresh, and I can put everything into doing the squat. Then we went to the seated hamstring curl. We did that, hit the hamstrings, of course. After the hamstring curl, we did standing calf raise on the Smith machine to really put some emphasis on the calf muscles. Then we went into the barbell lunges. That's gonna work, the quads and the glutes same time after that we did more of a mobility exercise where we did the step ups on the box holding plate above our head that is more of an agility slash mobility exercise that i like to save towards the end of my workouts because i'm not really trying to put a bunch of muscle on with that lift i'm just trying to work my abs a little bit work my mobility agility things like that so as we age there's going to be important to do to make sure we can still have full range of motion full functionality of our body as we age a little bit because you know if we don't use it you'll lose it and the older we get the more stiff we get so we got to work on those things as we age and then last we did seated calf raise and that just works the calf a little different angle than than doing the standing calf raise which i actually prefer seated a little better and the machine at my gym just got fixed so i had to do those today so typically my philosophy around doing the legs is I want to hit every muscle group in the legs. I want to hit the quads, I want to hit the hamstrings, I want to hit the glutes, and I want to hit the calves. So I'll do one workout specifically for each one of those muscle groups. And honestly, you can just leave it there. That'll be a good workout. But if there's a certain area that you're lacking in your legs, I would actually add on a second exercise for that leg. And then what you see I'm doing now is I'm getting in a little cardio 
just to loosen up my legs. Like you build up a lot of lactic acid when you're doing those lifts. So this is good to loosen up a little bit of that lactic acid. Make sure you're not as sore the next day. It's just gonna be good to get some blood flowing through the legs. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just as like a cool down from the exercise. So yeah, that's basically how I do my legs. I do different exercises every time, but y'all got to tag along with me today and see kind of what I'm thinking and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So remember what I said, work each major muscle group, quads, hamstrings, glutes, calves. And honestly, you can leave it there. That's a good leg workout. But wherever you're lacking in your legs or wherever you want to grow the most, add on an extra, extra exercise for that. And key, oh, another, another thing was, I don't work my abs on leg day because when I'm doing the squats, when I'm doing the lunges, that's gonna work my abs a little bit, second hand. So I don't specifically do an ab exercise on that day. I save those for my upper body days, other days of the week. So that's the philosophy around my leg exercises. If you wanna learn how I do my chest days, watch this video right here where I go through my chest day philosophy and how to get a bigger chest. So see y'all next week.